y'all? This is Drex One, another episode of the History of the Bay podcast. Behind the lens, we got Rocky Vision. We got King Said. We got D.O. on the boards. We got Skino producing in the cut. And we are sponsored by the good people of Amo- Amoeba Music, San Francisco, Dying Breed, San Francisco. And today, man, I can't say how excited I am that we got some legendary guests. We got a hype man in the cut, Goldie Go, the legendary... <laughs> Let, let of the me alone. Federation. It's not about me. No, nah, you in here though. You in here. I gotta give you. I gotta. Me. I gotta I shout you, you out though. It's not about you though. It is. It is about the man Rick Rock, man, in the building. We <laughs> in here, baby boy. I appreciate you, man. You know, I sought you out, man. I love what you're doing. I told you that, man. Right so, on. Right on. For sure. And big shout out to Stressmatic for connecting the <laughs> dots. Yeah. And uh, we got a Young lot of 22. histories. We got a lot of history to talk about today, man. Yeah. I mean, just for those who don't know, if you're watching and you don't know who Rick Rock is, I mean, first of all, slap yourself. And then second of all, I mean, just go look at the catalog. It's crazy. But um, you got a real interesting story outside yeah. of the music. Right. And uh, 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 I believe it begins in Alabama. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, well, actually, you know, I was born there. So right. uh, at like one years old, I moved to San Bernardino. Hmm. And from there, uh, we moved to Philly for like a month or something. And then we moved to Fair uh, to Fairfield also soon. And I've been there, you know. And I lived in the city for a minute. But other than that, that's in Sacramento. That's, you know, that's where I was from. But yeah, in Montgomery. So I ended up going back, you know, like as a teenager back to Alabama. And that's when I kind of really, you know, started taking the music seriously. And then... Um, Got into a um, <clears throat> start interning at SNA um, Music Promotion. That's a you know promotion spot in Montgomery, Alabama, and you know they would have clients come in from all over different regions, and they you know they take them around to the uh, to stores and uh, you know and, and to radio. And so I started interning there, and that's where I met the Conscious Daughters. Uh, with Scar- they were at Scarface Records at the time, right? And they were doing a little run with Scott Gordon. And uh, they came through, and I gave him a tape, and he took it back to the daughters, and they picked a song called Gamers. It was a remix, though, and that, and they brought me to Cali, and that's, you know, it brought me back, and that's when I, uh, you know, started doing the music thing. So where, where did your, like, musical inclinations start? Like, do you have a musical family? Were you rocking with instruments? Right, yeah, my Uncle Randy. So he's a drummer. He's a pilot. He just retired uh, from American Airlines. But so he's like the hero in our family. You know what I mean? Like, and he's like, you know, we have a woman dominated family and he's like a cup, one of the couple men and he did his thing. But he also used to, that part was dope, but he, the part where he was a drummer was hard to me. Like, you know, and so what I would do is take uh, my mama's Folgers cans, like a small and a medium and a big. And back then, they were metal and shit, you know what I'm saying? And you would cut the, I would cut the tops and the bottoms out of them and leave the plastic. They had a little plastic thing that went over it, too. Right. And I'd leave those, and I'd play those like drums. So eventually, my uncle was like, uh, he gave me his drum set. <clears throat> so he would come, and he would play something. Say he'd come on a weekend when he he was in SAC. I made the Air Force Base. He'll come down to the flats. He'll be like, you know, he'll put a record on, and he'll play it for me. And he'd be like, I want you to learn that. And I'll be like, I'm going to learn that by the time he come back next weekend. You know, and so I, I got on the drums like that. And it, it basically started like that. That's where my first music shit started from was that. Yeah, that makes sense because your sound is like very like percussion right. focused. Oriented. Yeah, yeah that's right yeah, there. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so what, what, what was the differences of like when you're growing up between the South and Fairfield? The South, when I left the flats, so Fairfield is one of the Best microcosms of that I could think of uh, for um, getting along. So it was like Filipinos, Mexicans, blacks, whites, uh, Vietnamese, uh, Koreans. I guess it's just a, and in the mix of them all, like it was like right there. And so when I left there and went back to Montgomery, Alabama, uh, I went to a I went to Lanier High School. <clears throat> I mm-hmm. went to Carver Lanier. And JD. But anyway, yeah. So when I went there, it'll be like one side of the bleachers be all niggas. Yeah. And the other side be all white people. And I never seen a split like that. Just like naturally, you naturally just split yourselves like that. Like that has to be like a 
long lineage of history to even get you to even, you know, and as teachers, as nobody's a problem. It's just what it is. And that, I think so the culture shock with that was the, and, and there was no other nationalities when I moved there like mm. that. Um, so, you know, and we live right off of like Martin Luther King's church is right here. My projects at Hilltop Arms was, you know, right down the street from it. So we, we this is where Martin Luther King marched. There was a lot of history. The slaves came in right there on the Alabama River. And, it, you know, it's a, it, it's a lot of history there. Yeah, that's You know true. what I mean? But, yeah. Hey, Goldie, you, you, were you born and raised in Fairfield, too? This is not my interview. Brother, this is, this is, I just said yeah, commentary. This is, just, this is contributing to Rick at, Rock's story. I'm talking I was about born in Reno. I have Bilal ties, but I represent Fairfield. 807 Falcon Drive. So we, we yeah, just, we, we're just trying to paint the picture of what Fairfield was like for y'all. What, what was it like well, for, for you? Well, for him, it was different for me. I'm older. Okay. And so when I came, like, it was it's it's a no dope. Time. It was the dope, at, like, the real dope when dope first came. So it's like that type of a scene in a little city. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So it's the V, it's us, it's Oakland. You know, it's Oakland, the V, then us. You know what I mean? So it was like that type of thing. It was like, you know, troop jackets, filas, you know, cross cords, you know, silk shirts, you know. It's uh, it's zines of Vogue's dome lights, knuckle tops. You know, it's that era. You know what right, I'm saying? Right, right, right. When I was a youngster, so that's what I was from. It's like, you know, it wasn't Knox. It was Dromers. You know what I'm saying? It was a, you know, it was that Grammys. It was before the Grammys. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Even that. It was, you know, that era, and just the youngsters, and we was all like teenagers. So that's the flats I know, like how it is now. Even in the '90s, when I met Goldie. When I came back from Alabama, I met Goldie. Um, that was a crazy time. But, you know, it's a small city. You know what I'm saying? So the thing with the flats is um, you're going to run into your enemies, mm. like, off top. So, um, you know, that's the thing about that type of city. When, you know, there's a few niggas out there that's really, you know what I'm saying, you're going to run into it. You know what I mean? But... But yeah, that's where you know that's that's you know that that's the flash. Yeah, man. yeah, yeah. That, that that was the answer I was looking for. So yeah, 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 n- yeah. nice save right there. Mm-hmm. Uh, so getting back to SNA, that's real interesting. So that that's like a regional service right. for for cats that's like touring from out of town when they touch down mm-hmm. in Montgomery, yeah. in the Alabama area. Mm-hmm. Okay, because that time it'd be mom and pop stores. So I'll take you to all the mom and pop stores in the city. Yeah, that's selling your CD. I'll take you to the radio stations. Uh, it, in here is a record pool. So mm-hmm. you meet, I will have the, all the record pool DJs pull up and you meet them and, you know. And that was uh, Mike uh, London, DJ Shadow, who gave me my, my shot over there. I was like, man, just use me for whatever you need. And I let, he was like, cool, you use me. And I just got on his fax machines and called different labels and, yeah. you know, shit and, that wasn't never going to work. But. And you mentioned, you mentioned Scarface Records, so y'all working with independents and, and majors. Off top. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting, man. So you slid a beat tape to the daughters. Mm-hmm. Um, and what were you using to, to make your first beats? SB-12. Okay. And SB-1200. I think I did the daughter shit on the SB-1200. Um, yeah. And the Pac shit. I did the Train War Stories and the gamers like in the same uh, SB-1200. So when I, yeah, when I came out here, I brought the 1200 disc with me. You know what I'm saying? So when I got in with Pac, that's how I slid the disc in and shit. On, you know, got on the album on some, you know, just on some weird shit. So that, <clears throat> that was the first, that was the first piece of equipment you started with. Was SB-12. The SB-12. Right? SB-12. And so we had 2.5 samples, seconds. Yeah. And you, you, we, so we speed up the, you know, the tape. <laughs> high speed, put it in, and then just, you know, truncate it down. So it... You know, I'm sampling the, you know, what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and and it would trick the sampling machine. Then we so got, you, you got 2.5 seconds, but you can stretch that out, basically. And I think that's what enables, you know, what I do. You know yeah. what I'm saying? It's not like really kind of, I'm not really into sampling other people's shit or taking. You can cuss and shit, right? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. And um, into taking somebody else's brick and hip hop and putting it in mine. You know, in, in my building and shit. I'm like. You know, it's, and I think that enabled that in some type of way. You know what I mean? Like, just being creative at that time and having the, how you can make your records. You, just, you, you didn't have all day. You didn't have 190 tracks and on Pro Tools and, 
You know what I mean? You was it had to be extra creative. And I think that, you know, traveled through the years. Well, that's some hip hop shit is um, you you make a lot with a little. Yeah. And you use what, what you got available to you. Mm-hmm. So that's the trip. So you produce for the Gamers remix. Mm-hmm. And Swap out, man. They, they, Say game, dude. Swap out, black. <laughs> Good looking, my ninja. They, they brought you back to Cali on the strength of that record alone. Yeah. So they, yeah, so they brought me out. Um, I, I lived with Scott Gordon, who was their manager at the time, uh, for a few weeks. Um, we, as soon as I got off the plane, I went to Mike Denton's, and this is where they did, not too long ago, I got five on it and the remix. They recorded all that at Mike Denton's. He mixed it and everything. That was, Shout that's, out Mike uh, Denton. Infinite Legend. Studios, right? Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. He mixed a lot of my records. And um, that's when I first met him. That's when he was in his mom's basement, you know, off of Hagenberger out there in Alameda. And um, yeah, and so so I came straight off the plane. I went there, mixed the record. And then from then, I just kind of wanted to stay. I didn't want to go back to Alabama. So I was like, man, what, what was going on? And I ended up going to one of the daughter's rehearsals uh, for a show. And, I'm, and I seen Mike Mosley. And from there, me and Mike Mosley connected. He took me back to his studio with him. And I ended up living in his studio. So I left uh, Scott's spot. And, the, and from there, that's where this shit started, like, activating. You know what I mean? Because he had 40... Uh, Click was sliding through. I remember Daz and him came through and shit. I'm like, God damn, this shit is real. Yeah, that must have been a hell of an experience. Man. Because, I mean, shout out to Mike Mosley, the legend. I mean, arguably, like, the creator of the Bay Area mob sound. Not even arguably. Like, he basically... Sam Bossy, too, nigga. Sam Bossy on the yeah. bass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Gotta say him. Yeah. yeah, no doubt. There's a lot of mob. I'm gonna say Mike Mosley, Sam Bossy. I gotta give it to my nigga DJ Daryl. Mm-hmm. Out that motherfucker boy was clowning. Nate Fox was clowning out the rich. Niggas don't remember Nate Fox like that. I do. These niggas was way more advanced than me. Like, and I just come from the SB-1200 sample kind of, and they was playing, you know, with changes and bridges and just way more advanced mixing and mastering. We weren't doing none of that in Alabama. Kyrie. <laughs> yeah, Kyrie as well, yeah. Kyrie. You know, Kyrie. Yeah, you know what studio mean? So, tone. And, studio yeah. tone. K-Lo and them. Right. Come on, we. Tone Capone. Tone Capone. Come on. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Even my nigga JT, the bigger figure, was slapping the beach and shit. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. it was niggas I, I really like. Man, these niggas is like, okay, um, this is a whole different ocean, a different, uh, the water is different. I like jumped out of one little uh, fish bowl into like a riller bowl or something. Fish is bigger, more vicious, and water's a little, it was different, man. I had to uh, acclimate. Well, I imagine that cats like Mike Mosley obviously saw something in you. Yeah. That you had, you already had some heat and you had potential to be even better. Right. So that I mean that's that's a hell of a time to bounce into the Bay Area when all this stuff is like booming. Right. The golden age of Bay Area, right. right? And then and then already you have experience on the national scene just through um the place you were interning at. Right. So it kind of sounds like it was like a right time, right place yes. type of scenario. And he got at me on some real shit to where I could feel him. He was like, I'm already doing this shit. You're not gonna make and you're not gonna break me. He said, uh, I like this shit because I was doing straight hip-hop shit. Yeah. He was like, I like, you can add on to my company. And I thought that was just some real shit. I was like, okay, I can fuck with that. Yeah, it sounds You just going to give me a chance? That, 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 you, you told me what it is. Yeah. So I got to show up. That's what I got to do. And, then, and and I could respect that. And he held his word. And he showed me a lot, man. He was... A lot of mixed sessions, a lot of, like professionalism. And- yeah, yeah, I've I've gotten to chop it up with Mike a few times, and I I, I know he's uh he's got a real good business sense. Yeah, and he, he he knows what he's doing, which uh is really important if you're gonna be an artist, especially a producer, because uh-huh. producers get jerks a lot of the times. Yeah, yeah, yeah he was a uh, he got me set set up, man. Like you know, he got me set up, so. It ain't nothing but love. And I always, I mean, you know, I, I knew him from the Sabbaths when we was younger. Because Mike was out there fucking around, you know what I'm saying, doing yeah, his yeah. thing, too. And so, uh, and it's so ironic, man. We stayed on Pennsylvania. I could open my front door and walk like five steps, and his door was right there. 
And uh, but we never knew we would work together. That's crazy. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. then years later, we ended up working together. You know what I mean? Shit was shit, the story is wild. When you get old enough and see how everything connects, man. Yeah, it's probably hard. To, it's a little hard to see when when you're in the moment. Right. It so, takes some time. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So from so from Conscious Daughters, um, what what was the next um project that you started working on? Um, Conscious Daughters. Okay, so then I was around. I, I, then when I started staying with Mike Mosley, that's 40 slid through. So then okay. I did. Don't care now. Don't care now. Don't care now. Nigga, what the fuck they hit for? You know what I'm saying? This is You got all the bread, nigga. <laughs> yeah, 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 I can't do that. Why not? Oh, who's trophy? trophy? <laughs> all right, so <laughs> he walking in the studio, and so he walking in. I just. You know what I mean? Like he walking in, and then we just, ugh, and then we just, it's just like one of the moments. And then, and that's how that came. So it'd be shit like that. Just these, that's why I say it took, it takes time when you get older to see, because it's extraordinary. Yeah, that is crazy. Like, just because yeah. y'all don't even know my teenage years and all that shit, then moving and then, but doing music in Alabama, traveling all around, going to New York, doing meetings, doing shows in Alabama. And then I come over. And I, and I get on. And then once I get the Federation, they don't know all that past history, but that's what I'm using to train them. That's why I got them in Oakland at the at the uh, rehearsal studios mm-hmm. and doing y'all shows that spread apart. One yeah, in y'all spread tired. apart. Because I already was doing it. And it's like all I'm these... Still tired. And so when you get older, you see how it is extraordinary. It's just, it's just, it's just, it is fucking dope. But my bad. I'm no, a no, tipsy, no, man. No, I'm like, no, no, yeah, man. we're corral your brothers. Just, a lot of history. We're just conversating, bro. Yeah, yeah. So that's, that. I mean, that's a, that's a crazy tweet that it starts from you just having this little skeleton of a beat to, for those who didn't pick up on it, it it's, you're talking about record haters. The, mm-hmm. the first song on E-40's album, The Hall of Game. Yes. Which, uh, uh. He must, he must have had some shit on his mind when he heard I, that, too. He did. <laughs> he came in, and then, you know, at them times, they had them extended clips. So he would have the big gun sitting on the side. Nigga would have a... He, niggas was on E&J. He would have that Irk and Jerk, <laughs> big bottles of Irk and Jerk. Uh, uh, excuse me. And then he'll have... Uh, Long John Silvers, all this Long John Silver set out <laughs> and just sitting there and and Mike at Mike Mosley's studio on Webster Avenue in Fairfield. And um, you know, and that's when I first got on in. And the crazy shit is, I then I did circumstances on that same record, right? But that was different. I was in LA at uh he was mixing and we were at you tripping, nigga. Swear to God. Ah, you buzzing. So uh, we was at uh, Larrabee North, and he's mixing. And so Pop came through, mm-hmm. uh, uh, 187 Fag. Uh, they got in there and got down. They, Pop got down, did Million Dollar Spot, all that shit. And then, uh, and then um, so then while they was mixing, I had like some uh, modules. They had modules on the mixing board, like a Vintage Keys Plus, like a, S, a SE1 Moog, like a couple modules in an S in a in an MPC. So I started doing a beat, but I had to plug my earphones into each individual one. Wow! So I couldn't hear them all together. Right. So I made the beat first. I plugged it into the MPC, made like drums, and then I took it out the drums and I put it into the um the next module. Found some sounds and I then I kind of play. I played that. And I take it out, put it in the next module that I played there, you know, and just, I didn't know what it was going to sound like. Circumstances. Right. right. I, I swear to Moses, nigga. I swear to Moses. Look, look, so then they they stopped playing. The engineer was mixing whatever he's doing. He stopped. I said, man, can I hear, uh, could you put it all together? It was going through separate tracks. He put it all together. And then Circumstances came on. Well, did uh, Chic. My Chic. Chic, 187. Then they started that. doing like a cocaine they started doing like a hook for circumstances or whatever, and then they they just got he just got down right then, and that's how I made Why circumstances. I never, I swear to God, that's that, that shit. Hey, I, that shit was main. That's but that's what I was yeah. on. I know like, all the shit you do. I never thought that one. Yeah, that one was a trip. My bad, though. No, 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 no. That's, yeah, that's yeah. crazy. But that's how circum. So that's so. And then okay, so circumstances. So it was record haters. That's when I first. Yeah. So I already knew 40 from the 80s, from, from you know, the game and all that shit. And real quick, can I ask you, like, being in the South, like, like 
Alabama, it seemed like 40 and a click was kind of hitting those markets. Right. So were cats in Alabama like hip to what was going on in the Bay and, and the sound and all that too? At the same nah, time? they no. really wasn't okay. like a Bay Area. They really wasn't on it. But 40, um, I remember being at my baby mama's, Monte Carlo, and uh, hearing Five on It remix. Uh, you know what I'm saying? I was in the car and I heard it on the radio in Alabama. And I was like, God damn, I remember that nigga. Mm. That nigga had that twin. I used to think Darnell a D shot was a twin. I thought they was twins back in the day. I remember that nigga, man, that is crazy. And then, you know, then not even that long later, maybe a year later, I was working with him. You know what I'm saying? And so, but I don't remember it. Not, and not, niggas knew. But not like, it wasn't like the shit in Alabama. Because right, right, back right, then, right. it was Miami bass music. Oh, okay. You know what I'm saying? In, in the Montgomery, the South period, prevalent. Yeah. Luke, Luke yeah, came yeah. to my high school uh-huh. and performed with the dancers and everything. Right. You know what I'm saying? So that's the town it's in. Luke, you know, it's like dancing town. It's like twerk town. Right, 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 right. Always so, been that. So the Bay Area, it wasn't quite translating. Not there. all the okay. way, but they knew 40 because he was he was just poking out. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So they knew him and it, certain niggas fucked with him for sure. And then so you ended up producing those two joints on, on the Holler game. Yeah. And I just said, hey, man, I don't want no money or nothing, man. Could you just, could you put, could you just get my credit? Because that's all I really like. It's like, I just wanted it to be for real. Like, I just want to see my new cri- I want to look at the Source magazine and see produced and have my name up in there. Yeah. And uh, and he was like, yeah, yeah, cool. So I didn't charge him or nothing. We he didn't pay me nothing. And, you know, and uh, but, you know, we the back end publishing and everything, he handled all that. And I was like, okay, I can fuck with my nigga. My nigga's um, on his business and shit, and he kept his word. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, you know, I was brand new, so... Yeah, I mean, that's good advice for some of these young producers, too. It's like sometimes you just do shit on the strength and, 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 and you plant those types of seeds and they, they pay off down the line. Yeah, opportunity is way better than um, ego. That part. Any day, of the opp- any day of the year, twice on Mondays. Right. So, so you know, obvious, obvious, um, you know, opportunities. Right, like, okay. right, 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 you know right, right. I mean? Not just anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah I mean, yeah, like, yeah. man. Yeah. And something you just feel. But that one, I was like, when he walked in the room, even like Mystical, I did a song, uh, uh, Murderer. It was like that, too. I, you know, so, but when you, when it's like that and it just happened, and I'm like, bro, let's, hey, could you put my name on my shit? Yeah. You know what I mean? So anyway, shout out to you, Fody, man, for that. You know what I'm saying? So did, so did I re- <clears throat> read correctly that it was, that it was 40 that, Passed some of your music on to Tupac, is that correct? Nah, no, no, no. That came through. Uh, that's a whole long story. I heard. I heard my nigga. Um. Uh, what's my nigga? The real king of slaps. What is Mister Fab? Mister yeah. Real King of Slaps, man. Still. You're not him. I'm talking about the yeah. nigga. I'm talking about the producer. My nigga from East Palo Alto, man. Oh, oh, you doing ESK? Nah, he ain't ski, nigga. Oh, uh, Pro Oh, Shanti. Talking about Pro Shanti. 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 My bad, my nigga Shanti. Yeah, because uh, it turns out Shanti was in Atlanta meeting Pac the same time I was in Atlanta coming back from a show. At the same show, like Death Row and uh, what's my niggas from Florida, Luke and them, got into this big fight. Mm-hmm. And so he's getting with Pac and Pac, like, I'm loving what you're doing. This is Shanti's story that I just heard. Like, man, I love what you're doing. I want to fuck with you. And then I'm, but I'm there too. I'm in the same hotel while they're there. Like when I listen to his story, I'm like, wow. But I'm going back to Montgomery, Alabama, where I live. So long, the story fast forwards, it's 95. Shanti has a baby uh, in his interview this week saying that he baby, so he couldn't come to stu- Pop got at him like, man, come to the studio. And he was like, man, I got a baby. I can't, I can't do it. And so then Pop called Mike. And I had already came from Montgomery, Alabama, and now I'm with Mike. And that's how we drove to L.A. and got what Pop and I got on. And it was, I just thought that was so strange when I heard his story because we were in the same building at the same time, but I didn't see Pac. He did. But. Yeah, that's crazy. People don't understand how, how tapped in Tupac was with the Bay Area. Like, a lot of these casts that are underground to a lot of people were were 
people he was fucking with, people he was on his radar. And, and, and um, for those who don't know, like Mike Mosley produced quite a few uh, joints for Tupac, uh, I believe starting on uh, Me Against the World mm-hmm. with him um, uh, Heavy in the Game, Richie Rich, a mm-hmm. couple other joints on there, I believe. Yeah. And Rick Rock was also involved in the percussion of those songs. Oh, is that right? You should know these things. That Rick fucked me up, I don't fuck you up. <laughs> Um, not on those. I went out here okay. at that time. Okay. But on, on some on, on, the, on the joints on Me Against the World that yeah. Mike was producing, you yeah. was you I doing... wasn't on those. I okay. wasn't even in I wasn't even out at that time. When like heavy in the game and um what's the slow one he yeah, did? Yeah, like can I dun, uh dun, can dun, get dun, away? Dun, dun, yeah. yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, so I wasn't I wasn't here at that time. And so that's why he was telling me, nigga, I do not need you, nigga. Yeah. That's what right. I don't need. You right. might be a headache, but I wasn't. I'm not a head packer. I just want to learn and be dope. I'm childish. I want to be dope. I'm not, I don't want to be rich. That was like a childish thing. But as older I get, I want to be the best at what I do. I, like you couldn't, there wasn't no internet. You had to get on TV. You had to go around the world. You had to move the world to get to on TV in front of people. That's a lot of work. You know, yeah. that's the era I'm from, and, yeah. and that's, you know, that's the cloth that I'm cut from. So I do, you know, you know money's good, but I, I never chased that. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, that's that's a that's a, that's a um, bad thing to chase. If you're an uh, um, a t- a intellect, uh, music intellect. You know? yeah, yeah, yeah. That can water down your creativity. Go down rabbit holes. That's yeah. Sometimes you can't get out. Yeah, but, you, I mean, fuck, man, these opportunities, bro, like, to get that call, like, all right, come with me to L.A. We're about to go record with Tupac's, I mean, the, the biggest rap star in the world at the time. Nigga! I, I was like, <laughs> no, we put up, we put up to, uh, uh, the fuck is that hotel? Then we put up to the hotel, Pac walking out. Um, he walking out. We nigga. The next thing, next thing you know, we all jumping in cars and caravanning, and we go to the. We had Can Am. We had Death Row Studio. Now, me, D Shot, Fody, um, Sebo, Outlaws, Pod, um, Johnny J. Rest in peace. Rest in peace. Uh, let's um, do it. His wife, uh, newly married at the time, it was in there, and it was just the most. Um, Surreal shit of all times, bro, to even be there. I'm walking out, I see DJ Quick. He makes it. What's the one with Richie Rich? Not Richie Rich, but Method Man and Red uh, Man. Yeah, I got, got my mind, mind made. made up. Yeah. He mixing it. You know, he got the bridge hanging. I'm, I'm, he looked to me while I'm walking past like that door. I'm like, God show. damn. Then we get in Pac, play the whole All Eyes on Me album, the whole double album. And then he say, all right, now what we going to do? You know what I'm saying? And, and I'm just like, wow, this shit is fucking crazy. And then he got an SB-1200 sit, sitting here. I got a big bag of SB-1200 discs. Niggas is talking shit while they Talk talking. Shit. I'm sliding the disc in, loading it up. And then he say something. I say, man, I got something loaded up. Mm-hmm. Hit that doom. And then the trading war stories came on. That nigga just, ugh, we writing to this. And he just... I mean, that nigga probably wrote that shit to ball. He wrote it like he was tracing it. Wow. I'll put it like that. And I was like, God damn, that what the fuck? He wrote it like he was tracing it, and he told the engineer, just track it in a two-track. The, the, uh, the producers come in later, and I'll track it out. And he went here, laid his shit down. Ad-libs, all the shit came out, and, and he was done. Everybody else was just sitting there writing. And he, you know what I'm saying? And that's how it kind of started. So I was like, I was like, hey, Mike, man, hey, man, let me use your phone real quick. Let me get the keys to the truck real quick. I got his phone, went to the car, called the homies in Alabama like, nigga. Because I'm there, I'm, I'm just regular. You know, I'm just, okay, you know, I'm just saying, yeah, man. What's that? I said, man, that's you. I mean, if, you, if you're fucking with it, it's just something I was fucking with. He's like, yeah, okay, whatever. So I ain't acting juiced or that. Yeah. You know what I right, mean? Right, Until right. I get to the car and call my niggas, my nigga, you can't, you, you're not going to believe this shit, my nigga. You're not going to believe where I'm at and what is the fuck is going on right now. Like, so for me, I ha- you know, it's just, this whole shit is a journey of surrealness and like a, a dream coming true for me because like I said, I'm childish. I chased the dream. And so just watching different 
like shit opened up. Like, damn, this shit is, nigga. Like, you know, that's, for me, that's, you know, that's the shit. My bad, bro. Nah, you ain't got to apologize. It's mm-hmm. fucking crazy, bro. I, I, I feel you. Yeah, it's a, it's a trip. And that was, and that was, so that was the one joint you produced on All Eyes on Me. Oh, huh. Those. Okay. Those yeah, are... we did two on that album. But we actually did four that day. Because uh, we came back when he was recording or Hit Him Up. Um, but we was there and recording Hit Him Up. Yeah, that's crazy. So, yeah. And the left eye and the, uh, and the motherfucking uh, Big Gip and them slid through. Right after he was tripping at the at the Source Awards or whatever, yeah. was Pac tripping at the Source Awards in L.A. with like Bad Boy or something? It was oh Soul Train Awards. Okay, yeah, yeah. So as they came from there and hit the studio, you know what I'm saying? And uh, but anyway, um, yeah, it's it's it's, it's been surreal. Y'all, I'm, y'all, I'm a little, you know what I'm saying? Your boy on one, so I, I'm gonna have him, you know, reel me in. I'm gonna try to the, I'm gonna try to fill in the gaps. Yeah, I mean, when you, I get long winded, I mean, man. No, nah, no, nah, it's good, bro. That's what we here for. We just yeah. listening. What was the other joint that that came out on all all eyes? It was uh, trading war stories, and we ain't hard to find. That's right. okay. So that's you and Mike. Yeah, yeah, I just did the drums on we on hard. We ain't hard to find. Mike did like the keys and shit. That had to be some crazy energy, man. Um, crazy. Talking about Sibo, E Forty, Richie Rich, Outlaws. That's what I like. What you said when you was like Pac fuck Newt had his pulse on things. Yeah, because Sibo, he was fucking with Sibo. Yeah. He was Sebo, the ball head nut. I mean, just all his energy when we see because we all drove up, we caravan up there together. So when he seen Sebo at the hotel, that's what he was on. Then Sebo jumped into the the, the um to the drop top with Pac. Mm-hmm. So we was caravanning, and it was Pac and Bo, Pac and Bo in the two seat or bins. And them niggas was riding like he fucked with Bo. You know what I'm saying? He really, really, really loved Bo. That's why I think. All of us changed when we left L.A. and came back to the Bay. I just think we all changed. What's that, man? Some water. Some they was just so advanced, man. They was just so dope. It was a. It was the Death Row album, the Pox album before it came out. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. So we in the Bay, you know, and it's my... You know, it's like simpler. They shit was mixed super dope. Yeah. Uh, it was just a higher level of professionalism. And then we all took a piece back. I think I ain't in Bo's head, you know what I mean? But I know, like, he got the, um, not the outlaws. What's, um, what's my, 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 my fingers. My fingers. Man, I done did songs with my nigga. You know, I'm tipsy, what man. You mean? But like that. With the bitches singing on the hugs. Yeah. And we just got, we just seen something. Pac was just so, man, that was like a, a meteorite just passing. Like you could jump on a meteorite and ride it. That's what that was, bro. Yeah, we, we got a chance to jump on it and and we all took a piece of that. Man, I know I'm, man, I hate to be acting like this on your no, show, man. Bro, I mean, Edit it's, your it's, nigga, man. Get your bro. nigga right, man. Be good. I, I appreciate your enthusiasm mm-hmm. for this shit because because you could be trying to play it smooth. Like, yeah, you know, I did a little record for Tupac. And blah, 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 blah. Like, oh. nah, it's good to hear that, yes. you know, what, what what this meant to you. It was yes. meaningful. And then not to mention you got a platinum plaque out of it. Yeah. Diamond. But, diamond, yeah. Yes. But that's not even... Get like that you, shit right, man! Like you yeah. said, like, it's not even about the money no. and, and, and the commercial acclaim. It's about these experiences and, and, and the journey that music has taken you on. Yes. Because I don't think, man, I done bought some cars, um, studio equipment. Um, I might buy some clothes here and there. I don't really do jewelry. And, and so at the end of the day, they, they make memories for me. My yeah. cars or anything like, but the, the, them times? Yeah, man. And the meeting these... Uh, these meteorites, basically, that in the you know some of the best Pac, Jay Z, you know Buster, Forty, and Snoop, and you know just the list goes, and it's like you got to work with some. You got to you you seen it, and you, you know what I'm saying you you moved on it, like you know what I'm saying, and it happened. Yeah, and that that that's it. Sounds like it happened fast too, like. Relatively. Yeah. Relatively. And then not too long after All Eyes on Me is when Pac actually passed away. Right. Rest in peace, uh-huh. Tupac. But you, so you came back to the Bay Area with, with a battery in your back. Yeah. Basically. Yeah. Because I was in Montgomery with it. 
Uh-huh. And then, you know, it's like the, that shit fell apart, but I still was, I was still me. It's just the next day. Yeah. So you just meeting me, like if I was in Montgomery, Alabama in, uh, in the ni- early 90s or something, it's still me. Right. It's the same. So that's just how I was. I'm like, man. So, uh, yeah, that's it. And from there, so, I mean, I imagine, like, <clears throat> things start taking off for you more in terms of your name getting out there yes. and, and meeting more and more artists. Mm-hmm. You produced for, uh, and then you, you're doing, like, major label albums. Yeah. So we're talking Jive Records with 40. Mm-hmm. We're talking uh, 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 Death Row, mm-hmm. Interscope, mm-hmm. All Eyes on Me, and then Def Jam, mm-hmm. Richie Rich, Seasoned Veteran. Mm-hmm. So Jay-Z was, and all that yeah. was Def Jam at the right, time. Right, right, right. Um, Dubsy, um, Electra. And so it's then, a um, lot of, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, and those, those, those things are cool to this day. Yeah. You know, those things come in handy. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, uh, uh um, and he produced the majority of, uh, RBL's third album too, I mm-hmm. believe, right? Mm-hmm. Shout out to our my nigga Black C. Hey, man. You know what I'm saying? Hitman. I didn't know Mr. C. He passed before I, you know, I got back. But, uh, Black, I mean, but Black C, I mean, first of all, he believed in me. Spice one, two. He gave me nine songs on the Untouchable album. And uh, but they both had major label situations and they both paid me. Cool. Mm. And they believed in me. They gave me the, a high volume of songs, eight or nine. But with Black C, he was like, he knew already knew how to make albums. He already been doing it. And so I I I, I seen how on that album. Uh, Eye for an Eye is that the name of that album? Yeah. yeah. So he um how he did the skits and everything and like I was there we was in out here in the city and we, when we did we just had a day to do the skits and I was like oh okay oh and he, and he just just like like training mm-hmm. I don't know if he knew that but you know I pro- he probably did he is a producer and so uh, I seen him on Vlad TV and he was like he 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 got love for me because I I pulled some slack. From him, because, you know, Mr. C died and he, you know, with the with the beats, I came in at the right time. Yeah, it's kind of a big deal because he produced most of the first two albums himself. Mm, right. So for him to, like, hand that off to another person is right. it's pretty big, bro. Yeah, yeah. Now, he, he taught me, though. That's, yeah. I mean, it's, 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 he taught me, though, for sure. I, like, organizing the album, I was like, man, why would you put that? He was like, man, because blah, 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 blah. And he just kind of was telling me. But we, yeah. Shout out to Black Sea, man. And nothing but love for my niggas, man. Yeah, shout out to you, bro. Believed in me and fucked with me and paid me. Mm -hmm. And what nothing but stand up. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, you know, if he ever need a slap from me, he got it. Oh, yeah, yeah. I think uh, he's still gassing too. He's Off still top. dropping music. Nigga out there yeah. doing it. Don't know, like, nigga don't need me if he need me, though. <laughs> it's nation, man. That's off the rip, off top. You know what I mean? So I'm, I'm going to just go through this crazy ass catalog that you got, bro. And I'm going to just throw some names out there. All right. Um, you got Mystical in 1997. Mm-hmm. And then Mystical's also on that RBL album. Right. Yeah. So yeah. how did you link up with? With Mystical? Uh, he came through Mike Mosley's studio. Okay. And it was similar. As soon as he walked in, I started going, do, 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 because the song's called, uh, M- oh, Murder- no, it's called Murderer. Oh, that was that- first. Whoa! Yeah. Listen, so he got a song called Murderer. And then, so I, he came in, like I said, on, I swear to Moses, <laughs> I'm sitting like this. I look to my left and he's walking in and I'm just kind of, do, 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 I have to start playing that. So I'm just playing it. And he come in. Like, he, like, make rocking chair noises and, like, creaks and doors. That's what he was doing. Then he go, all this kind of shit. And he just started, he just started saying, for the fucking murderer. And then I just started adding on to the beat. And we recorded, like, 15, 20 minutes. We started recording. Damn. So that's kind of, like, how that happened. And from that, um, we had a little relationship. So he... Um, uh, I don't know if it was RBL, I believe it, yeah, it was RBL. He was managed by Tone at the time. Shout out Tony. I don't know if he's still managing RBL or not, but he was. But uh, they Alias wanted to, music group, baby. Oh yeah, yeah. Shout out Alias. They yes, wanted, yeah. they yes, wanted to Christ, get in. Uh, they wanted to hook up, and I had a little relationship, and I think that's how that that came about. 
And because uh, I remember seeing Mr. Cole in Alabama and playing him the record all the way mixed so he could hear it. Okay. So, yeah. And at the time, uh, Mr. Cool was like No Limits. Yeah, the highest yeah, just star on No Limit. On no Limit. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I, I had a question to add on to that. Because mm-hmm. that song, Murderer, was about his sister. His sister. Yeah. So, how did you feel like knowing that he put such a, um, a vulnerable song and vulnerable topic? on one of your records. Because I, I love that album. That was the... Uh, unpredictable, the album. unpredictable album. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, so so when he came in, he uh, after he recorded like uh, the hook in the, like maybe the first verse, uh, he was like, um, the song's about a sister. Right. Then he said, uh, some, some nigga murdered her. And, uh, but he feels like her soul is like in him. Right. Like, that's what he told me. Yeah. And then he said, uh, and so... He was, and so when I heard that, I, you know, I don't know. I was a younger nigga at the time. I was just kind of like, wow, that was me and soul was in you. Like, I could more get it now. But it's like, what, what, what did you mean? Whatever, okay. And it was just like, but he was just so powerful, like, and pure or something. Like, you know, just coming. Eh, oh, uh, 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 what was that? You know what I'm saying? So I think at the, like, a little later, once he, once Master P, so I was in Montgomery, Alabama, Master P called my auntie house, like on some weird That's shit, right. asking for me for the song, to, to get him the song. That's when I knew it was real. Because mm. he, wasn't, he wasn't signing Master P at that time. Yeah, he, was he was on Jive. Jive. Yeah, Jive. And then something happened, and he was signed to Master P. And so P called about that song we did back then when he wasn't signed to him. Yeah. That song ain't mixed or nothing. It's straight how I made it. You know what I mean? Out the uh, NPC and shit. They didn't. We didn't mix it or nothing. And um, so that's when I knew he was using it. And then when I heard the whole thing together, I was like, you know, it's powerful, bro. Because I know what he told me. So I don't know if the people know, but I know what he said to me. And I'm like, God damn. You know what I'm saying? But so I don't know. I don't know how I felt other than the moment itself was surreal, kind of like, uh, it just so, I don't know. Like I was a, just thought, I was, organic I ass I weird shit. I was to, coming, came first. I, I don't know. No, no, that came That's later. That's crazy. That came later. That's crazy. That's how we heard it. I, yeah, it came later, for sure. How we come, that's crazy. And that's how, see, when we did wow. that song, then I started building with uh, Black Sea, and that's how we started doing more. That's that was the crazy. first song. That would make That's what Lurch is on that crazy. song because we always had this. We we was working on Cosmic Slap Shop and we always in the yeah, same studio about that at too. the same time. Yeah, yeah. So, so how, how how did Cosmic Slap Shop come together? Uh, so I came, like I told you, I came and met Mike Mosley. I came out there and then Mike. Uh, at some point, I started living with Mike at Mo, Mike Mosley's studio, but I already had a history in Alabama. Dooney Baby is part of that. Oh, okay. So I went back and got Dooney Baby because one of the homeboys. My nigga Moose Swingers on my he's on my fucking arm right here. But uh he died. But before he died, he was like, he died in the uh no, he died of a wisdom tooth. Wow. So but, but but he got in a bad car accident. So my nigga was like, check this out, Rock. I'm finna die in like a week or two after the car accident. And he's like, so you need to fuck with this nigga Dooney baby. You two niggas got something to do in the future. I'm like, shut the fuck up, nigga. What the fuck? Who? The one nigga with the skinny tie talking about flies, uh, dragonflies fucking in midair on his raps. He's like, yeah, that nigga. I said, bro, that's your homeboy, man. He said, just look, bro, y'all got something. Y'all got something to do in the future. And so I like, whatever, nigga. So then like a week and a half later, he died. I took him to to uh, get his wisdom tooth pulled. And I took him to his spot at the at the college. And I went and got his medicines and shit. But he ended up dying uh, that day. So once I got flew out to Alab- to California that I told you earlier, mm-hmm. once I got my first check from Conscious Daughter, 17 it was $1,750. When I got that check, I flew myself to Alabama and I went to Dooney. He was working at the um, 99 cent store in the uh, Montgomery Mall. So I went there. And I said, hey, bro, I just walked in. He was fucking with a customer or whatever. And the customer went. I was like, hey, man, let me holler at you, man. So you remember me, nigga? Like, yeah, nigga, whatever. I said, hey, Swinger said, man, uh, whoop-dee, whoop-dee, whoop. But, you know, basically, I just told you. 
And I said, so look, these niggas, I'm out there. I went out there. I was I'm living with Mike Mosley. I was like, man, uh, they're doing it. It's really real out there. We we don't just have to rap. It, it, could, it could really happen. I said, so I'll, I got a ticket for you. And I got a ticket for you back. So I'll get you there. Just look, all I can promise you is the grind. I know, you know, you got it. We're going to have to grind. But it's real there as opposed to Montgomery at that time. So I was like, um, so he, you know, agreed. And so I got his ticket. He came back. Um, and, and then we started work. I started working on his shit, shopping his shit everywhere. And long story short, then we ended up start doing a federation later. You know what I mean? And when and how did Big Lurch become part of the group? So he because he's from Texas, right? Right. So somehow with Mike Mosley, that okay. was through Mike Mosley. So he was living in Vallejo, though. His dad is from Vallejo. Okay. So he was staying with his dad, I believe, and he would come to the studio, and then Mike kind of like parlayed that. So I brought Dooney, and uh, Mike Mosley liked to Dooney's voice. So that that's when I went and got him and whatever. And then um, because I played him one of our old songs. And then uh <clears throat> so I went and got doing him and I came back. So Lurch is there. So we meet Lurch, you know what I'm saying? And, uh we was the fuck. And uh that nigga was hard. That nigga was hard. He had, he had a lot of motion out here in the bay. He had a lot of uh he ended up being on a lot of like dope features and because uh, he hard. Yeah. That nigga's hard. And uh that's man, there's so many stars. I need a movie, bruh. Yeah. God damn it. But so that whole lurch shit is a whole fucking whole nother thing. It's just but it's but it's amazing. But my nigga, shit, I, right? I'm gonna keep it to my nigga was dope. And um and so that's how that happened. Mike kind of like put that together and we kind of like started doing songs and uh and Tume, one of them Tume sons, rest in peace. Um, not quality, Damu. Damu signed us M2 to M2 May Records MCA. Hmm. And that's where we did Cosmic Slop Shop. And uh, with me, Dooney, and Lurch. You know what I mean? But then Lurch, you know, he was he was better. And so he kind of was, he was hearing shit, I think, and um, about how he was better than us. And he felt it. And he would kind of explain that to us, whatever. He better. <laughs> or whatever like that so shit you know me and Lurch stayed in it you know but that's my nigga I loved him you know but we stayed in it and it's a big nigga 6'7 yeah and uh so but uh you know but you know we we did that and uh you know he had his whatever happened with him they can look that up right it's just it's a crazy situation happened with my nigga and that happened right after we came back from that nigga should have stayed with us. Let me shut the fuck up. He should have stayed with us, though, on that tour. He left that tour. So he quit the group while you were on tour. Yeah, we were going. We left Frisco. We were here. We were here. We did a show here at the... Damn, I forget that hall was. What, Black Mad Time Hall. I was there. We did that show. Mad Time. And then we were leaving we'll there. Uh, was it The Roots, I think, or something? We'll take Clan and The Roots. Okay, so then... We were on our way to Portland. So, you know what I'm saying? I had a nice little time with my little low. You know what I'm saying? I had something to tell you out here, you know the bay. So I ain't tripping. I get dropped off at the airport. I'm headed down to our airport, our terminal. I see Lurch in a whole nother terminal. This nigga, the American Airlines or Delta or some shit. I'm like, nigga, I like, nigga, what you doing? Nigga, nigga say, like, I'm going on, blood. I said, all right, my nigga. I went on and did what we had to do, you know what I'm saying? And when he went back, everything went bad. Oh shit. Yeah. Damn. So that was that was from that tour to his current situation. Basically. basically. Wow. There might have been some time in between, but basically. Well, like you said, they can go look that up. That's one of the crazier stories in hip hop. But yeah. um I think uh for the record though, a lot of people respect Cosmic Slot Shop. And, uh, oh, that's cool. Yeah, it sounds like, I mean, maybe if things had worked out different, y'all would have gained some more emotion and all that. But, you know, obviously, you landed on, on you did pretty well for yourself right, regardless. Right, so, right, right, right. Uh, I want to throw out a couple more names if it's cool. Yeah, do you Because you have so many people you produce for, bro. It's like, 
man, I, I just want to touch on some of these people, and one of them is uh, Marvelous. Right. Just because she's super dope, she's hella cool too, mm-hmm. nice person, and doesn't get talked about enough in right. the Bay Area as, as being one of the first ladies of Northern California rap. Mm-hmm. And so you you jumped on um, Fearless. Yeah. yeah. Actually, it was... Um, what's the one with, like, the raven on the cover? It was, uh, I did, that's the first one. It's before Fearless. Okay, my bad. The one right before Fearless. Because she was working with, with Mike Mosley a lot, too, Yeah, right? so yeah. she was doing, coming out of Sacramento. Yeah. Coming out of Sacramento. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so they was doing that one. And uh, I, like I said, I was living at the studio. No matter of fact, my nigga York got out the pen. When he got out the pen, he heard I was staying in the studio, and he let me come stay at his apartment in Vacaville. So I was staying there at the time. But I was still at the studio every day, every night. So uh, so I met her. And I basically, same thing. I started doing a beat right there in front of her. She was like, I don't, I don't fucking with that or whatever. So we did that one beat. Um, Fearless? Was that the album? Yeah, I believe Fearless. so. No, that was that was, the, that was the New Tribe album with the white, with the black suit. It was one white like a raven or oh, something. Okay, I don't okay. forget what that okay. is. Yeah. So we did uh, Sexuality in another song on that one. I'm rapping on that album. She let me rap on that album. And uh, so, yeah, she was just dope, man. It's like, uh, she's like, she good people's. Mm-hmm. Um, she was dope because she would sit there and write in front of your motherfucking face. Yeah. And she's go in there and spit it. But be like, cool. And you either you going to feel played. I don't know. As a man, like a male rapper, you know, she was, she was up. She was, you know, she, she was, she was dope. Yeah. And, you know, fucking with AWOL, the whole shit, Freddie T and, um, uh, damn, I, was, I can't believe I can't remember my, his Bobby, young Bobby G, uh, who was running it while T was locked up. Uh, all that shit was a great experience for me. Killer Tay, um, the whole shit. Yeah, C-Bow, all they that. all had, had a. Had you know what I'm Marvin, yeah. Marvin is definitely one of the dopest female, folk, one of the dopest rappers that came out from the. You know what I'm saying? Definitely from Sack. Right. You know what I'm saying? I, I would, there's a lot of, there are dope, but but for, for my listening ear, I would like Sebo, Marv, um, you know, Brother Lynch. Of course. Uh, Mozzie. Mm-hmm. I think they represented Sack the most out of all the MCs that it came out. No disrespect, nobody. Might want to throw that uh, X rated in there too. Yeah, let me throw my nigga in, but my nigga was locked down for a lot of time. Right, right, right. During right. them times when I came out. Because I know I, when I came out, he was already locked up. Yeah. So I, I would hear about him. Um, I heard he put a record out um, uh, on like through, through in jail, you yeah. know, through the phone and shit. That, you know what I'm saying? That was, that was dope as shit. And like a Scary X was out at that time oh, and yeah, shit. Yeah. Niggas was yeah. hard. Like they both was like, they was hard. But yeah, X rated for show. Sure. I, I think that's it. I think they the Mount Restmore's of, not to say nobody else got down and kicked their fucking feet, even the youngsters now. Don't get me wrong. Ski 64, rest in peace. Yeah, yeah my nigga too. Ski 64 is good. Ski 64. Damn. Yeah, man, you went to the game. You turned to the party. Man, okay, okay, rest in peace. But uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Cause Mozzie kicking his feet, he hard. Uh, you know my Zilla niggas. You know I fuck with them, Maserati, Ricky. You know what I'm saying. But other Straight than that, fuck. family shit. I can say um, Mozzie kicking his feet. Um, um, representing Sack. Right. Sebo, marvelous. Right, right, uh, yeah, yeah. You like we already, you know, yeah. So one of one of your biggest uh. Placements probably came on Jay Z's uh, Dynasty album, right? And uh, much respect for that, bro. Mm-hmm. That's uh, that's a big, that's a huge accolade in hip hop. Right on, my ninja. And how did that come together? Uh, who did you just say, Jay Z? Right? Yeah. Um, so I sent a beat, um, some beat like <laughs> nice and sloppy and mobby. Uh, but my style. And uh, Jay-Z fucked with it. And so Big John, who I was signed to at EMI Records at the time, he's now um, president of Sony Music now. But at the time, he was in A&R uh, for publishing at EMI. Hmm. And he had Jay-Z in the office because Jay-Z signed to him as well. And so he was like uh, playing a beat. So I would send beats. I would go to FedEx every week and send beats to Big John. Big John, like, 
he'll hit me like, um, there's one on here. You're on to something. Like, click. You know what I'm saying? That's it. And they're like, God damn. Okay, well, I'm on to something. You know, I, I just keep doing it, I guess. So, I keep, so every week I would send beats. So one day, uh, he hit me and Jay-Z, he was like, man, let me let this, this nigga, he put Jay-Z on the phone. And Jay was like, yo, this shit is crazy, right? And he and he played the beat. And I was like, oh, that's that mob mainy beat. And then, um, so then Big John was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm going to call you back. Click. So, you know, he calls me back and said, okay, Jay wants the beat. He's going to fly you out. Uh, we're going to tra- track the beat out, whatever. I get to New York. I tracked it out. I get to New York. I play the beat for Jay. Jay don't want it no more. And so now I'm in New York. Uh, just, you know, kind of like the Tupac shit. Just when I put the discs in, it's kind of like the same shit. Yeah. So it's like, man, I'm out there. The dream is crushing around me. The room is like caving in and shit. Because now he don't want the beat. But then they got a they got a keyboard. They got an NPC right there. So I just... Start playing and get your mind right, girl. Get your mind right. You want to that son when you're fucking with the ROC? I just start doing the like the keyboards and shit and start making the beat. And then he just kind of started. He got on the couch. It's his baseline studio. You know what I'm saying? This, I believe it's one nigga was at the Timberwolves, but he went to the Boston Celtics. Tall nigga Kevin Garnett and another nigga and, and Just Blaze. It's like they studio. And then I so I, he got in, he made these faces, got in and recorded. And then from there, I did another beat on the spot, which was um squeeze first. That's questions last. And then uh the other two, um the one with dog family. Yeah, no, the other I gotta two, say something. I gotta say something. The I other say two something. I had. Cause change the game was a conscious daughter's beat. Hey, oh, that's yeah, crazy. With the with the dog pound on it. Well, and yeah. I did the hook. Yeah, it was. It wasn't a dog it, pound. It was corrupt. You right. Yeah, it was corrupt. It's still dog pound. So yeah, you right too. <laughs> you both right. <laughs> but I think dog pound was both them niggas. Know. You know, so dads are corrupt. But it was that. It was corrupt, and the conscious artists had it. Um, and yeah, and that's how that. So I I slid that over to them, and um, that's how I got changed the game. And then another one came after that. I forget what the other one was, but. That's crazy, man. So, I yeah. mean, and then from there, you, you also worked like Beanie Siegel and, and, yeah. and Fabulous and Angie Martinez. Yeah. I mean, were, were you just like in rotation with some of these like record <laughs> pools, like the beat selection pools at some of the labels or, or were people tapping you personally yeah. to, to holler? Yeah, it's, it's really like that, bro. It's like, I remember my nigga Scott, Gordon, I said with the concert, was manager concert's daughters, and then he started managing me. And I thought a manager can do everything for you. And I was like, well, what are you going to do? And he was like, man, you got to get hot. When you get hot, then everything on. I'm like, well, what the fuck you going to do then, right? But he was right. Hmm. Once you get hot and you own, I mean, it's a space. It's new. It's like, what is that? If Once you have your own sound, like the producers, the best, I'm telling about the highest high, the highest mountain you will ever feel is doing something that only you do, that came from your mind, that came out of the dimension, whatever the thoughts is. I don't know what that is. But you brought into the physical world as an original thought, how you thought it to be. And then everybody can, can like, like absorb it and fuck with it. That means they fucking with you. There's no other higher feeling. Than that for a producer, like it, it don't get no better. I mean, there's room fillings. It was like Jay Z in there, like yo, he recorded. You know, you watching him record. Them is highlights. That shit is dope. It's fuck too. But do try not to bite nigga shit, man. Just just to my producer niggas, man. Don't just try not to emulate, man. I know it's hard. I know it's different time and everybody doing the same ass shit. But you your soul won't. Um, your soul will suffer for doing that because you're not doing what you're here to do. You're doing what they're here to do. Yeah, man. That's fucked up. What about the suck MCs, B? I'm saying if you do what I do, then you're doing what I'm here to do. And you're not doing what you're here to do. And and, and your soul will suffer. Like, like as a producer, like as a, a you know, a pure artist, you know what I'm saying? Like, anyway, no, I no, I, know, I, no, I know exactly what you mean because God. you're one of those producers, right? Like, if you hear... 
if you hear a P Rock beat come on and you don't know anything about it, you might just be like, oh, who's this? P Rock? Right. You hear DJ Premier, Scratch right. Easy Suit, you know, and PC. Oh, is that Premier? Mm-hmm. And if you hear Rick Rock, it, it's a certain style mm-hmm. that is, is definitely like, it's a lane of your own. And just now that we're talking about it, let's just jump around a little bit. Mm-hmm. What do you think about the game today? A lot of producers I see are like making uh, the type beats, like yeah. a Mozzie type beat, right. uh, a Mac Dre type beat, Drake type beat, and right. that's how they're um, hustling their beats. Right. Um, what What are your thoughts on that? I think it's a double edged sword. I think it's dope to the to in respects to the hustle. If you got to get a couple of dollars up, you know, you you love doing beats and, you know, um, but I, I, I talk to those people a little, but I talk to the people that arrived on like, like felt like a, like a star, like that fell on the planet. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like somebody who thinks this is them. Mm. Then for those people, no, you can't take what niggas is doing. Resist it. Understand it. Understand the space, work within that space, but find your own niche in it, and you will be better for it. That's where you will find your love. That's where somebody will love you at. Like doing what everybody do, ain't no gonna be no love for you. They they're gonna like the beat because it's the same as everything that's going. But they ain't gonna remember you, especially the producer. You ain't out there. So the only way you can have your music as a impressionable real life person that people can see is, is it's an obvious sound as you. Now they can see your music as you. If they get a picture, you're like, that's him, nigga. Oh, I hear what you're doing. You're doing him. Yeah. Uh, when you did that, that's on Rick Rack. Rick did that on nigga 96, nigga. Oh, he did it in 2000. He did it in 2010, 2003, 2000. Whatever the dates of different month musics I put out, you will know if somebody bid it. You know what I mean? And I realized that when I was with Dre. And I'm like, man, I used to like to do shit Dre was doing when I was young. But now I'm in the studio with him. Am I going to press play on some Dr. Dre salad and shit in front of him? Yeah. Nah, like, this is real. Like, you really here. I want the producers to know you're going to really be there, bro. You're going to really be where you want to be. So when you get to where you want to be, the best thing is to be who you are instead of being somebody else. Because ain't you ain't fooling nobody. Everybody know... You know what I'm saying? It ain't nothing different. Well, when you're telling that story about getting placements with Jay-Z, it's not like you made a bunch of Jay-Z-type beats. No. You just made some Rick Rock beats, and he happened to fuck with them. That was the dad. Now, that's the dope thing. That's yeah, like that's the pretty dopest Ill, bro. shit, bro. That's why I'm trying to tell them, like, that's the dopest part. You just do you, and they fuck with you. And then it's like, it's, it's, I don't know what the human experience is. A but beat. They, uh, well, that's one of the dopest human experiences. You know what I'm saying? Well, like you kind of right just slid that in there on the slender, though. When, when did you blink with Dr. Dre? Uh, the first time was Exhibit. I did a song, um, Symphony in X Major, featuring Dr. Dre. He rapped on it. Okay, okay. Uh, so, uh, I, uh, you know, that's how I started. So I did that, and I and I got in with him. And I'm mm-hmm. looking at him, you know, just like we. You know, he got mm-hmm. the little scar on his chin. I'm like, damn, this really this nigga. He mixing on the board and shit. I'm like, man, so I'm asking him questions. Why, what made you, you know, I'm trying to soak it in. He was fucking with me. Yeah, man, I, you know, you telling me little shit. And I said, that shit was dope. I'm like, man, I'm here, bro. I'm really, I'm here, man. Like, and so... I can't do what he do. And I can't do what RZA or none of my favorite producers, Premier. I can't do what they do. I'm going to be around them. I need my own brick in the house of hip-hop. So as, so as we're talking about that, right? I mean, and I could just keep going on these these crazy-ass credits, bro. Mm-hmm. Mace, Exhibit, Red Man, Method Man. I mean, it's, it's dope to see that. Just being from the Bay, right. to know that you represent for us in that space as a producer on, on, on a mainstream, major label type of level. But in terms of creating your own original sound, I mean, the hyphy movement, mm-hmm. the hyphy sound, yeah. the song hyphy. Right. I mean, that's, that's you right there. Right. What? I mean, it's, there's so much I could ask you about that. And ask that shit. Like, <laughs> yeah, bro. I mean, and for me as a kid, like, that's that's like, that's my teenage era. Right. Like, actually witnessing 
that the hyphy movement mm-hmm. organically happening in the streets of the Bay Area, right. Mac Dre, Keep the Sneak, and then here comes a, like a new wave of the Bay. Right. Mr. Fab, mm-hmm. the team, oh, yeah. Frontline. Yeah. And the Federation. Yeah. So what what was the origins of the of the Federation? So I Dooney Baby. And we had that era. We already went, did Cosby Slap Shop. Lurch got locked up. Shit was falling apart. Now I'm just shopping Dooney, baby. Then I meet Goldie. I meet Ken Smoke. Really, it's a lot of these little young niggas and shit, right? And uh, out the sevens and shit. I meet Goldie. And then I was like, <clears throat> him and this nigga named Mully Mack. And, uh, and they was the two MCs that I met. And I was like, I want to fuck with these niggas. And then working with them and working with Dooney Baby and then niggas would come in and do songs together and then it just came into, it just started selling in that. I, I met, Stressmatic was brought through by Dooney Baby. There you go. Thank you. <laughs> but my nigga uh, Stressmatic brought Wait, Hold on, I, mean, I can't hear him. I can't, I get enough. Oh, we, we still rolling now? We good? Okay. Yeah, Dooney Baby brought Stressmatic and then we started working on songs and it just kind of like an organic thing. That just popped up. Then Big, I was sending shit to Big John. And Big John signed us when we did the Federation album, the first one. Mm-hmm. Um, that came out under under which label? It, uh, what was it? It was Virgin. It was Virgin, but what was Big John shit? It's where he from in Denver. Montbello okay. Records, Virgin. And that was under Virgin. Okay. Yeah, and so okay. Big John who signed me to a publishing deal had, had signed me over there for the Federation <clears throat> for that album. So he came to my house in Sacramento. We had all these songs. We had basically everything but Hyphy and Go Dumb and all that. And he, I got on tape. That nigga said, uh, I like, he was like, y'all niggas ain't the type of group that could just do songs. Big John be talking about yeah, he said, I need a movement. It's got to be a movement. I need like 100 niggas that fuck with it, and then 100 niggas got 100 niggas, and 100 niggas, and I, it need to be a movement with y'all. And then that's how basically he planted that seed. He left my house from SAC, went back to L.A., and I was just on my niggas for a single. And then we did, um, we, we got hyphy. Sent that shit to KML. And then um, somebody with Mr. Fab, I can't forget, whoever was, was managing me was like a PD or something like at the at the record station or something. Jazzy Jim. Yeah, so they hit Big John and was like, oh, they took Hyphy, they stole Hyphy from uh, Mr. Fab or something. And so Big John was like, I don't know, uh, something about the deal because... They said we took a Mr. Fab song. I was like, well, who is Mr. Fab? I, I had never heard of him in my life. I, this was back in the day. I don't even know who, who is he talking about. It, just, it have nothing to do with that nigga. So now I'm kind of interested to hear what his song sounded like. So, uh, I mean, that's just real history how it happened. So it was a bunch of ups and downs, uh, even getting Hyphy out. Because uh, Big John was trying to drop the group because he felt like if the Bay Area radio ain't going to fuck with y'all, then... I mean, you, if you can't get your backyard, I need you to have your backyard. And so, uh, but long story short, we just kept banging. Um, once we did Hyphy, and uh, we went to Cameo, they had uh, Big Vaughn played that shit, nigga. We was live. Nigga, it just started, it just started going crazy. So then we were like, well, then we went in, we did Go Dumb. You know what I'm saying? So we had Go Dumb, and uh, we had, um, I think the last song we did was that, what's that when I say, get Rick Rock Your Old Face? Hose in here. Hoes in here. That might have been like one of the last songs or something. But we was like, okay, okay. You know, okay, I see, like, where the, where the, where the people fuck with you. I was like, it clicked. Okay, let's do that. Bam, wasn't no hyphy sound. It was my. Right. It was my when we came out with that federation album. Man, I heard. I keep hearing um, uh, shit about like it's too hyphy because it wasn't nothing. It wasn't nothing like hella up tempo like that. Yeah. I was doing up tempo shit with Keith. Here come Keith the sneak. Right, 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 Blue right, right. Blue jeans, right. t-shirts, yes. and Nikes. Like when I started, you know, 
and um, some 40 shit. We was going up tempo, but it wasn't up tempo in the bay, man. It was mob. Check the history. You know what I'm saying? So when we came out with that, motherfuckers was like, it's too high for some people. It's too high. And we, you know, we the OGs want to keep it the mob or whatever. I want to keep it mob too. It's just, just, just us style I'm doing right here. Some up tempo energy. It's kind of like an amalgamation of w- where I was in the South with the Miami base. I was going to say, man, because what now. you were saying earlier about the South having the dance, the dance influence, because yes. that that hyphy sound that you were making yes. was all about that. And that's really interesting because even though, you know, Keek is, is credited with, with being the first one to say that on Wax, right. Mac Drake had a song called Hyphy, you know, way before the yes. hyphy movement. Yes. Do you think that it, didn't really kick off until the Federation dropped? Definitely. I mean, there's no, there's no, there's no ifs, ands, or buts. It's, it is what it is. It's not us. We couldn't have even did what we did without them doing what they did. Mac Dre right. and even the word and Keek and the, just the Bay period. You know what I'm saying? But what we did was a galvanation of it all. Like, okay, it's, okay, every, even sonically, you know what I'm saying? I think musically, it wasn't a sound like that to even say, okay, that's that. Because it wasn't all up-tempo. You know what I'm saying? I remember when that nigga Keith came with that, uh, okay, cool, cool. Right, right. He was already on some other (laughs) shit, though. That nigga was already tripping. But uh, (laughs) so it's just like I said, it's basically like when I came here, they was like, man, it's it's my music. And I was like, okay, let me get that. Because I was doing snares. I would never do a beat with a hand clap. But I do that all day long now. Yeah. But I, I had to get used to that. So it's like pieces I learned. But then pieces I added, you know what I mean? And so when I think of it, it's like, it's just that roller coaster. You can't take us out. You know what I'm saying? There are some hard groups that came around and started doing their versions of different shit that from their spaces as it's supposed to be. Everybody standing on the shoulders of others. It's just when people start looking down and forget they standing on seven different niggas' shoulders and believe it started with them. Yeah. That's where it gets weird. I understand it all. I know what it was. And I know my part in it. And I know our part in it as far as Federation. And um, and I know how high he st- how the song started. Because I really had the song for Keek. And I was like, hyphy, hyphy. I was saying it. And on, on the record, when 40 came through, you know what I'm saying? And we was working. He was laying on my floor. You know what I'm saying? Big ass pint of fucking Carlos Rossi in the bread cup. And you're just trying to come up with something. And I played the beat because I already had it, you know? And it's just like we in here working. Mm-hmm. Just imagine you like in here working, like talking to me, doing your job. Next thing you know, it's a bit, it's crazy out there once you put it out. It just is like it's crazy out in the outside world. And you're like, damn. And then people are like, nigga, you niggas from the flats, nigga. We, we nigga, you niggas ain't, you know, all this other shit. But it is what it is, man. It's like our part was our part. Yeah, and you- I stopped. Once it started feeling like a certain way, I said, I'm not doing it no more. I'm not, I'm not gonna do hyphy beats yeah. no more. Y'all keep it pushing after after uh I stop. And we're gonna see, cause it was like, I just I don't know, man. It, it, the energy started getting weird and I just kind of the second album. Yeah, I kind of just uh it's pulled back album. a little bit from it. And uh, because that just us style I just did. It ain't even like... It's not the yeah, style. Yeah. It's like a 900... It's like a 900 page essay you wrote and it's like just one page or something. So. I mean, that that's, that's that was probably the good, a good move because I, I mentioned this when I when I was talking about uh, high, the high fume era in my, my video that at a certain point it was like everybody in the Bay had a song called Go Dumb. It, right. it was like kind of recycling and repetitive. And then after a while, it got like too goofy. There's some shit that was just, yeah, it got watered down and it got too goofy. And it just like, it, uh, it didn't really evolve right. the way it could have. Right. Um, but uh, what I was going to ask was, was um, 
was Federation the, the first group to represent? No, there was Easy Easy SD out of Fairfield. Yeah, and then but but in terms of taking putting Fairfield on the map, really nah, on that level, nah. it had to be y'all, right? Right, because I was really on them, really stress because he's really the only one from the from the flats. Like Goldie's from Vallejo, but he been there years. Got but it. He really from the he really from the V. Got it. And uh, I'm from out there, so. I want. I felt like I know my city. It's a little city, uh, so if you can galvanize that, represent for me. And so I would tell stress like, man, maybe like represent that. You know what I'm saying? Like it'll be good for you. You know what I'm saying? It'll be for good for us. And um, <clears throat> yeah, so that was a uh, important part for me to make sure because I'm gonna represent. Like I'm from the old school, like the real old school sevens. You know what I'm saying? So all the old school niggas know me, so I represent them, you know what I'm saying, from that era. We can keep it solid and keep it pushing, and, uh, you know, so I represent that. And I wanted him to, you know, have that feeling, or or basically have that role in the group to represent that, because Dooney was from Montgomery. Right, 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 yeah. right. And that's cool because, I mean, you, you took that into going into my Get a Report card. Right. Which, which you played a big role in, and then right. you had Stress and and Goldie right. appearing on, on on that project. Mm-hmm. I mean, when that album dropped too, I think between between the Federation, and my Get a Report card is like you know I'm sure people knew knew about you, knew your catalog, but like Rick Rock became pretty much a household name right. in the Bay Area. Right. And, and I mean, my Get a Report card, especially just that 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 was such a monumental. That was probably like the peak. <laughs> Of the high few era right there. Right. When Lil John got behind it. Yeah. The whole bay got behind it. Yeah. I mean, uh, what was it like making that album? Um, that shit was crazy. I mean, it's like, the whole shit is crazy. So just because it's just working with 40. You don't really know his plan. Mm-hmm. He did say he wanted to do it. At that time, he was saying high few versus crunk. Mm-hmm. That was kind of like the theory behind or the the blueprint behind what he was trying to build early. And so uh, I was supposed to do the hyphy side and he was going to do the crunk shit. You know what I'm saying? And I'm, of course, I'm throwing mob in my, like my favorite song off there is that, no, what's that? Yeah, do, do you do you like this? Yeah. Ooh, that's my shit. <laughs> yeah, like this, yeah, that's one of my favorite pieces of all time. So um, that whole shit was just, um, just dope, man, because I was getting better. Um, I was feeling myself as far as I think I know what to do. Um, and so those were two great spaces to be in. And then I was in that space where I know what I do. These n- niggas like it. Mm-hmm. So I was in three spaces at one time. And so, uh, and I was learning a lot from 40. And um, yeah, he put together a nice, and then he took the hyphy movement the professionalism, like he he and short, them right. niggas knew how to do that right, shit. Right, right, right. Like to encapsulate it mm-hmm. and sell it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, we didn't know how we we couldn't we we didn't do it right. You know what I'm saying? We was just we was the movement on the street, like as far as the new thing. And then he he just he took it and uh you know uh, maximized it and showed the world exactly what it was. You know what I'm saying? And he's the nigga to be able to do it. With all the cities, he had Richmond, Oakland, Frisco, you know what I'm saying? He represented the bank, V-Town, Sevens. You know, he did it right. And he brought the light. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of niggas got deals off of that. So, Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely, man. I mean, I could uh, just probably sit here all night and just name different records and different artists you work with. It's, it's a hell of a career. Yeah, that's the biggest one for me. That that's know the what biggest you want. one. Okay. Yeah, so all of them to know what you want was make a clap was cool, but I know what you want. They, man, they hit me. That one right there, keep going. I don't know. You see the little girl, the, the lady with the... On the on the on the uh, mandolin or whatever yeah. the fuck she's on, the heart. <laughs> like I'm like, damn, this song won't stop. So, I, did that come about this kind of the same way, just being in in, in the circulation with the labels? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I actually used that beat for Jermaine Dupri, oh, sure. for Jagged Edge, mm. and so, but they were sham bamming whatever. I don't know if they liked it, didn't like it, whatever. So, but I, uh, 
<clears throat> but Buster kept getting at me. I was like, nah, man, but I, I um, because I had to make a clap first. So I was out there and he heard the beat. He was like, man, I want that beat. I'm like, man, uh, Jermaine got it right now. You know what I'm saying? He ain't paid me though. He ain't paying me, so we'll see. I'm going to check. And then I kept checking it was bullshit, so I just sent it to him. And then Bust was like, you know what you fucking did? You know what you fucking did? I was like, hey, man, I don't know. but And then he flew me out there, and we recorded it. And Mariah, she didn't come in. She wouldn't record unless she had, I think it was 12 hours of sleep straight. And then when she had 12 hours, 10 or 12 hours straight, then she would get up, and then she would sing it. Because Buster sang it first. Right, uh-huh. right, right, right. And then, you know, she got on and kicked her feet and shit. And I listened to that shit like, boy, this, I didn't think it was going to be a hit, but it was. I knew it was dope, though. Yeah, I imagine you're, th- this whole time, all these experiences we're talking about, you're still getting that feeling that you talked about when you were recording with Tupac. Like, oh, shit. Yeah. Look, look at- As a Jay-Z, he was like... He was a jazz came in when I was doing change the game. We was mixing. Jazz came in. That's the nigga who put him on. Mm-hmm. And he telling jazz about me and shit. And he like, uh, he was talking about playing the money, not the odds. Like, don't be scared of the odds. He was like a bunch of shit he was saying, but he was like, I'm gonna make you a star. And he called Big John. I'm gonna make your boy a star. Cause the first single was supposed to be parking lot pimping. That's the first single. So everything you see in that video for um, I'm a hustler, baby. Mm-hmm. All that's for parking lot pimping. The cars, the girls. That was for parking lot pimping, but then he got that record. Fucking Pharrell. Goddamn Pharrell, he came through with the hustler, baby. <laughs> and threw my whole shit off. But, you know, it was the, it was the right move. But, uh, yeah. So anyway... Yeah, man, it's 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 been a it's been a crazy trip, man. I might be uh just move, uh no, we going for a minute, point, but uh, you know, I just still I still want to ask about a few more things. Okay, yeah, let's cool, do it, bro. man. Y'all can edit it, right? Yeah, 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 yeah but yeah, I don't think I don't think we're gonna edit it. I think we're gonna keep it raw and uncut. Okay, man. okay, 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 okay. <laughs> raw and no cut. <laughs> <laughs> hey, another person that that I think has been pretty instrumental in your career, is Snoop. Oh yeah, my nigga Snoopy. Yeah, yes, sir. What's your what's how did your relationship get established with him? Um, ex- I started with Exhibit. So I was doing a song with Exhibit for the Madden 2001. So if you play Madden 2001 when the song come on, I did that beat uh, mm. on the game. And Exhibit is two songs on there. It means we was working on that. And Exhibit picked the beat. He picked uh, I think it's called DNA, the song Snoop song on Exhibit's Restless album. And uh, so I did that one, and that's how it started. And uh, so I was doing that, and I was doing the video game thing, and Snoop had came through and recorded his vocals and shit. And then we kind of chopped it up, and then uh, from there, I did a song with him. Man, it goes back. So I did a song with him for the Dog Pound album, one of these Dog Pound albums that he did on an independent label. Then I did... um, Western Union, a couple songs with him and uh, Superfly, Damani. Uh, on the East Siders album. Not the East Siders. The East Siders too, though. Working on the East Siders album, but that was Western Union. Yeah. So Western Union, East Siders, Snoop, Dog Pound. And then he did a song for the, he did a song for the Federation. Okay. So he got on our... Uh, yeah. Happy one of the, I Met You. Happy I Met You. Mm-hmm. And then... Um, uh, fuck. <clears throat> I don't, it's, it, I, I know I did that song with him, uh, Jeezy and 40. Um, and I did, I did, a, it's just, I don't know, it's like random shit that just started happening. He started fucking with me, but it was more random. But one day I hit him and I just, hey man, uh, if you ever need me to do your show, he had the GGN network. If you ever need me to do your show, man, or something like that, man, uh, just let me know, man. But really, I'm trying to, man, I'm trying to keep it moving. This shit is kind of, it was a crazy time. He said, then he hit me right back. Yeah, man, come on on such and such and such. I'm like, okay, cool. So I, I slid out to L.A. I did the show. And then from there, it's like a whole different style of music we started doing on like the newer age shit. And uh, we, uh, we started building from there. Like, um... 
And I, you know, shit. I'm on Mount Westmore now. It's it's a hell of songs with my nigga. I didn't know, but he he looks out, man. He, then we did the Madden 2020. You know, so he'll just hit me. And then we, like the other maybe like a month or two ago, he hit me about um. 19 Crimes, hmm. Wine. And, you know, so he hit me with little licks and shit. Like, man, they want to use the beat in this commercial. Or they want to use this beat on the Madden. Or they want to, you know, so it's our relationship been like that. When I get with him, this is what Snoop is. He's hip-hop. Yeah, for he sure. He really is yeah. old school. He's my era hip-hop. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And he comes from that era and you can he would, hear like the slick Rick influence. And he, and, he rep he respects and it. MC and all that type of stuff, man. You don't feel lower. You feel like he loves you. Like he loves what you do. And uh, you know, and that's like our relationship is a, you know a, a respect. Uh, well, I have res- ultimate respect for him over everything he did over the years and what he's doing now. When I come to the compound and just you know, just, just like I'll be like, bro, how the fuck do you do this shit, nigga? And smoke like that. Right. <laughs> like, you be on it, man. So, um, yeah, so with Snoop, man, ain't nothing but love. You know what I'm saying? We got a few new records finish, finish slap as we speak a fifth. And, um, you know, the grit don't quit. Shout out my nigga, man, for uh, for everything he ever did for, for a guy. You know what I'm saying? From the bay. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's why I asked, because it just seems like y'all have a, 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 a good working relationship. I really like that joint that y'all did on your album with with T Fly a few years ago. Mm-hmm. That mm-hmm. I was I had that shit on repeat for a minute when that dropped. Good look at my nigga. I forgot yeah. my nigga just got down. That's what I'm saying. I just sent it and he just got down. Yeah. And sent it back. I sent him um, what's another one on one of my albums? What's that one with Snoop? Um uh, it's the moment I fear. So I, yeah, I just sent him the beat, and he, and that's when he just sent me the lyrics back, and he said, "Matter of fact, nigga, I'm gonna use this on my album, nigga, and I'm gonna keep you on it." Mm. I was like, "Cool." And then we did Mang Phone, featuring my nigga Stressmatic. You know, so we he let me rap. Yeah. They let me rap on some shit, bro. Like, damn. You've you been getting, like, back into your rapping bag. Yeah. With, with, like, and dropping solo albums. Yeah. What's that? What, do you feel like uh, th- those were getting received well, or was it kind of hard to make that transition after being known as strictly a producer for, for so long? Nah. Um, I never... F- I put him out... Basically, as I told my nigga Swinger, I would put him out when he was alive. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Because I was a rapper. I wasn't a producer. So I would go to Dr. Fingers to get my beats in Alabama, and then he kind of was like the one who took, said, nigga, you could do your own beats, man. You got ideas, whatever. And he started showing me how to make beats. But before that, I was rapping. <laughs> doing shows and all the shit. All around, doing up and down the coast in Montgomery, Alabama, Florida, New York, South Carolina, doing like concerts, opening up. You know what I'm saying? And um. So I was already on it. So then, you know, I put my albums out because I want to. You know what I mean? I don't I put them out because I want to do it and I like it or, or you know, I, I feel I, it's cool. I, I, but I get I that sense when I hear it. It's like, yeah, you, it's you, not you like just enjoying, enjoying the process. You know, it's not where I live at. You yeah. know what I'm saying? It's not where I'm gathering a bunch of money at. But it's like, I, want, I have some shit to say. You know what I'm saying? So I say it. You know, some shit, you know, and it, this album I got coming out, it's like uh, the Grind, 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 Then Shine and the Ford Movement Project uh, is a double album and the Grind, 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 Then Shine is more slaps, more, you know, what you're more probably used to hearing. And, and it's about the grind. I got little skits of different artists like we've been talking about, mentioning me, Black C mentioning me, 40 short, different, you know, and it's kind of solidifying the grind, the grind, the grind, then the shine part. It, it ain't the shine, it ain't, the shine. It's grind, grind, grind in the shine. In anything you do. And if you can't uh, absorb that concept, then you ain't, it ain't for you. You know what I'm saying? Because it's a longevity thing. And um, so that's one side. Another side is the Ford Movement Project. And that's like getting older. I actually got a song called, T- called Time Don't Stop. You know, and then it's about getting older. And, uh, you know, it's relationships and just a grown man type shit. Boom bap on that side. And uh, <clears throat> so I do my shit because I got to get it out, you know, and I don't mind if I could, if I had to get it out, I might as well put it out and see if y'all fuck with me. But at the same time, I'm a music producer and I'm not a salesman. Sure. You know, I'm not a great salesman. So, you know, I, I'm more of a 
studio rat. Yeah. You know, that got something to say. You know, but I'm gonna keep doing my thing. But I, while I'm doing it, I'm gonna drop that something to say as I keep moving, you know. Yeah. And um that's basically what my shit is. But you know, and it's a bunch of slaps that authentic, good, um, you know, putting pain where they doing it, doing what they ain't still, at least from my perspective, you know, but um so I'm excited for that, but I don't know exactly where we was at. I kind of no, that's cool. We're just talking point. now, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think it's awesome. I look forward to hearing the new project, and I'm really glad that you're still mashing and, and doing what you want to do, and and still. And I see your, your shit on social media is dope, bro. Right like on, man. Flipping like all types of random yeah, samples and yeah. shit. We would never do that in the past. I would never let somebody hear a beat before I sold it. Like like what the fuck? never. But then. Like I said, right around the time I hit Snoop, like, yeah, you need a nigga on your show, nigga. Basically begging, let, let a nigga get on your show, talk a little shit or something, let him know. But I'm like, right around that time, that's when I was like, let me get on here. Because, you know, you go through the peaks and valleys. Yeah. And you don't know if your shit even hard. Yeah. But start putting out there, let the people tell you, nigga, your nigga, let the... Either you're worthy, worthy of celebration or you're not. You know, cel- celebrity, worthy of celebration. Mm-hmm. Like, are you here on this planet with something worthy? It's billions of people. Like, what do you got? Yeah, and as we talk oh. and go through, I mean, 30 years of history, it sounds like one thing that's helped you is being able to constantly reinvent yourself Man, and, no. and, and bounce back. We're not going to talk about the BIP. Yeah. yeah, yeah <laughs> but, they, I mean, they, that is crazy, though. You yeah, got, they you got, got me. You they got, got BIP, bro. Yeah, they got me. I that mean, was I was at I was at my niggas, man. We was at the vegan mob. Uh, I was in the back, but I could see my car. I could see it, just like I could see my ninja right there at the Adidas. I could see it. I was like, okay, I could see it. But I, the whole time when I was getting there, I was like, that's why I feel like it's my fault. Cause I was like, I saw the rental car, and I was like, oh man, I was like, but I, I was like, well, I can't do that. But then I pressed override, do, 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 override, and I overrode myself. I was like, okay, I get that rental. Then I was I put my equipment in there. I was like, don't do it. Then I overrid that. Do, 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 override. So, and then I got to the town. I rode around like, where can I park? So let me park in the vegan mart right there. And then the car pulled in. It's like, fuck. I said, but right there is park. Like, yeah, that's cool. So I went up there, parked. It's like, I could see it because I was doing the interview. I said, but I could see it. Shit. Now back to that motherfucker, man. Like six, seven years of my life gone, bro. Videos, I didn't, because I edit my own videos and I shot four videos uh, for this project, uh, two for one side, two for the other album. And, all, you know, they got that. That sucks, all that man. shit, and it was all my <laughs> that fault, That fucking brother. sucks, bro. <laughs> That's fucking whack, bro. bro. That shit was, that shit is, uh, that shit I don't shit mean to laugh. Me, I mean, it's just like, shit is just so crazy, bro. Nah, like, and then the police, look, the police came to, uh, like, on everything, man. White lady, man, good looking. White lady came down. She gave me the, uh, she gave me the, she took a picture. So the nigga, you see the niggas, I see the back of the car. You see the niggas in the back seat and shit. You see the nicest plate. And she just came out and took a picture while they after they bit. She came out shaking, you know, and gave me she gave me the gave me the picture, whatever. So the police came and they was like, man, you see right there where you got bit? The mayor got bit there yesterday. Wow. And they was like, man, it's an epidemic. It's a police. Then the police did one of the one of the guys around me was like, yeah, that's Rick Rock. Then the police, he was like, you Rick Rock? Rick Rock, Rick Rock. He was like, E40 on the Rick Rock. I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. They can start laughing. Then he was like, uh, he started telling me, he's like, bro, you got to go online. It's an epidemic, man. It was like 16,000 of this, 16,000 and something happened in the last week or two or some shit. Yeah. And uh, three, eight, $380,000 in damage, some old shit. And he's like, we don't even take the calls. You got to go online. Yeah. And so I knew my shit was a wrap, but hey. It, when you in it this long, you know it ain't nothing but keeping pushing. Yeah, my dot com, my dot org, back dot to a major comeback. That's it. Yeah, man. Um, and it's a new generation with this bipping shit. And, and one last question before I let you go. Yeah, is what what are your thoughts on on the current state and sound of the Bay Area production and and rapping? What are your thoughts? Um, I think it's I, um. Got it. <laughs> um, as long as the Bay do what the Bay do, 
Because that's the lineage it is. The lineage, I mean, you can't run the Bay is or, or authentically different. It is its own world. From the Panther movement, from Panther to Pimpin', to, mm-hmm. you know, the whole gambit of the whole shit and music and the San Francisco, the hippie movie. This the times, with, you know, the Bay is just a different thing. And as long as they keep that, don't try to do what Detroit's doing, don't try to do it uh, Miami, and my uh, Mississippi, Tennessee. Do what you niggas do. What the Bay do, uh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be good. Always. The Bay is going to be good always. Now, what I, I, I'm not all the way up on everything, uh, so I'll just say it like that. I know what the Bay is... Um, is about and it was originality, all the dark key, and all these original voices, and you know what I'm saying? It's own thing, hyphy movement, mob, you know. So we gotta, you know, stay in that vein as far as originality, not the old music, but and we'll be good, you know. Like, give me an give me an example. Who who is who's out there that's like? Oh, uh, don't ask me, man. Okay. I'm, I'm not. I'm you know. I I I'm pretty much a tunnel vision. Right. You know, I'm, I make music too, so I listen to my own shit more right. than anything now else. Now you can going feel on. me, so yeah. that's why I be I be on that. I try not to. I want to hear what's going on, um, you know. So I do do that. So I, I understand. So all I can say is, uh, put paint where it ain't. Yeah, and do what they can't. And you could be 5,000 years from now, and that's going to resonate. You know, the other thing is, too, bro, is, like, there's so many artists now Mm -hmm. in the Bay Area alone, and in just some of these cities alone, that you can't really keep up with everything going on. It's not centralized like it was Mm -hmm. back when you you first came out here. Right. So my whole approach is when people ask me about this, I'm like, man, everybody just do what they do. Yeah. If if you're in this lane, cool. If you're in that lane, dope. You know, Mm -hmm. if you do boom bap, that's what's up. If you do straight trap shit, that's what's up. If you do twerk music, do that shit. You know what I'm saying? And uh, just as long as you do it to to your best. Yeah. and, and, And really go hard and just do your own thing, then... More power to you, you know what I'm saying? I'll give them one more. More power to them. But all of those names are there. What's yours? Yeah. Make right, yours. Right. Make your own mark. Make yours. Yeah. Whatever, whatever you want to fucking call it. I wanna do, I'm going to do mob hop. I yeah. feel like that's what I'll do. It's mobby, but it's like you said drum drum driven as opposed to bass line driven. But I'm going to have a mob sinister bass line in my shit too. But I'm more drum driven. and So make your own shit. Like... Like, those things are there. Those are tents. And they have people in those tents with money. You can go in each one and sell your product in that tent. A mob tent, a, a, a trap tent. And a, but somebody built that tent. You know what I mean? And it don't matter. It just depends on the type of person you is. You want to, you just the type to go in different tents and, and make your money. Or are you the build, tent builder? And they, them is two different people I'm talking to. You know what I'm saying? The people that go in all the tents... You just got to be able to be good, be, get the good equipment and match with everybody doing equal and hit quality. Understood. But for the tent makers, you're going to have to know how to build a tent, man. And yeah. nobody's going to be able to teach you. you it's going to be your own blueprint coming from your inside. And you build that tent and they will come. Trust that. And if not, I mean, just look at my shit. I mean, not to say, and if not, I'm saying to believe it, look at my shit. Mm-hmm. Just doing what I'm doing, and you know what I'm saying? And, then, you know... This shit is uh, what it is. Words from a true artist. If right there, you right didn't know, now you know. This has been a really insightful look at one of the most well-respected and most influential producers ever. Not just in the Bay Area. Let's Man. just say ever. Period. Like that. Like Go back that. and look at the credits. Man. Go look at what he's doing now. It's still innovative. It's been really entertaining, bro. Right on, my nigga. I appreciate you. Hey. Edit my shit, my nigga, if you need to. Because uh, you nigga was long-winded, man. Make sure that, you know what I mean? Uh, go to go, young ticket in the building. The down. Federation. No, let me talk my shit now. <laughs> the and thou. I call you the God for a reason. Right. You saved my life. You took me out of a situation that I couldn't have made it out of. Without you, okay, niggas be over here just rapping and doing some shit. And niggas be fucked up. 
but one for the God, the rock God, Rick Rock himself. Man, but then you have to listen to the tunage of what the nigga's saying. Off oh, rip. I would have made it this far. I'm, what? God damn. I don't want to say our ages. No, nah, no, nah, we ain't doing that. <laughs> but right. I love you, man. I love I, what I, I feel man. what you're saying, man. I appreciate the shit. And we wouldn't be here talking this shit. You, thou shall know. There but you got to understand. Greater. I'm we, just giving you your We would still be working if you Credito. had a talent. Credito. Yeah. Credito. If you didn't have a talent, it wouldn't have went. So. Y'all got Rick Rock fucked up. There is none. There's nothing greater. Mm, oh, I see. No, I'm, this is me saying that. There is none greater on the West Coast. You can take your twos and fuse and your here's and there's, and you can do your slaps and your drops. And No. It's Rick Rock, man. That's all I'm saying. Fair guy. Man, much love, much love, my nigga. That, that ain't for everybody. Everybody got their favorites, man. Take but, it how you want to take but it. But I, I am going to have my own pom pom for myself, too. Nigga, nigga don't hold nothing. I, I got it. I'm proud of myself and the creator with the creator. The most high man. is enabled a nigga to do. I'm glad to be here. Um, you know what I'm saying? And I just, I, I hope I ain't, the drunkness didn't um, overtake what nah, I was nah, trying nah, to nah, say nah. or whatever. Not drunk, but tip senior nah. stuff. Nigga, you too humble. Man, that's me. It's going to be me, man, period, dot, end to the end. I love it. You're going to be I'm... on my funeral saying that shit. <laughs> nah, no, guess what? Nigga, Jesus is going to be coming you back ain't first, be the nigga, one. now. If that's this shit was really saying. fucked up, I, I would I would have stopped the interview. Okay, you okay, you okay, you okay, okay. You're dropping jewels, man. Right on, my It's only one Rick Rock. It, it don't get no better than that. And I this is the history of the Bay Podcast. Go to go. Go to Gizzo. Federation. Yo. Rick Rock. Yo. Dregs One. Shout out to the whole team. Much love. And we out of here. Yo. Recognize where you got the game. We got our own style. Got our own slang. Northern California is a West Coast thing. This is the history of the Bay. Recognize where you got the game. We got our own style, got our own slang. Northern California is a West Coast thing. This is the history of the Bay.